Hi, I am Dr. Deepak Kumar. I welcome you all to this course, the Elementary Procedures for Clinical Microbiology. Under this course, I will be discussing today the first module, the Specimen Collection, Transportation and Acceptability. The content of this module is designed to be used by the laboratory and other medical personnel responsible for specimen collection and transportation to the bacteriology laboratory for further workup. This module is also of great value to personnel responsible for hospital epidemiology and nosocomial infection control. Let's begin. So as we all know that an efficient laboratory service is a foundation of modern healthcare system as it is essential part of clinical decision making process. Hence, microbiology laboratory is becoming important not only in clinical medicine, in prevention of hospital acquired infection, but its role is further increasing as the new diagnostic technologies are developed day by day. However, for any laboratory, its performance is just by the quality of the reports or the result which it's provide. And we all know that the results can be only as good as the original specimen. So, the role of specimen is very important. Many specimens are obtained from animal sites that have a specimen contamination with indigenous microbiota. In this situation, collection and interpretation of the specimen becomes very difficult. Hence, Every clinical microbiology laboratory faces certain issues and the important one being a proper identification of the microorganism which is expected. At the same time, the other important challenge or the issue which a microbiology laboratory faces is the collection technique which should be proper to maximize the recovery of microbial pathogen as at the same time minimize the contaminants that grows in culture. Hence, it is very necessary that handling of a specimen should be taken with proper care. At, at the same time, the specimen should be properly handled not only at the time of collection but also at the time of transportation, storage and as well as processing. But the collection and transportation most of the time are done by the caregivers. So it becomes very important for a microbiologist to, to guide and train the caregivers how to collect or choose the correct specimen and how to transport this specimen to the laboratory. Now the big question arises: how to guide them. So a simple answer to this question is to provide a written laboratory specimen collection guide. So every clinical laboratory should distribute a written guidelines for proper specimen collection, transport and storage. These guidelines must be complete, explicit and up to date. At the same time, the copies of these guidelines must be available to the all person who handle the specimen and also a copy of this guideline must be available also in the laboratory for any reference. Now what are the potential benefits 
of having these guidelines we all know that following a guidelines will be fundamental to diagnosis treatment and management of a patient with infectious disease also it will limit the unnecessary uses of antimicrobial thus it has advantage in promoting antimicrobial stewardship at the same time it improve the trust reliability and applicability of the testing results also this guidelines if used correctly limits the work up of the contaminants so these guidelines are to be followed but at the same time the guidelines should not be rigid it should be rather flexible because many times patient cannot be ex expected to do exactly what the what he is asked to do so he cannot reproduce what the guidelines says every time the specimen received in these special cases may not be optimal or it may be less than the optimal but it should be accepted only if the specimen is obviously appropriate and it should not be accepted if it is inappropriate therefore here plays the role of intelligent decision making and appropriate measures accordingly in these situation is required or expected from a laboratory personnel what to accept and what not to accept and what to process to what extent then how to start with microbiology cull specimen so to start with the safety so so safety is the priority so follow the standard precautionary guidelines which says that number 1 treat all the specimen as potentially hazardous so for that whenever you are collecting a specimen use appropriate barrier protection like gloves gowns face mask eye shields etc as far as possible or almost always never contaminate the external surface of the container because that is that becomes a potential source of infection for others try to minimize the direct handling of specimen in the transport and as far as possible use plastic resealable bag with separate pouch for paper work because paper work should go differently with the specimen then there are certain general consideration to be followed like the specimen which are collected should represent the site of infection so certain things must be kept in mind before collecting a specimen like collect the material from where the suspected organism is most likely to be found that increases the chance of the recovery the specimen must be collected prior to the start of antibiotics as far as possible this rule should be followed it is prudent to state that observation of asepsis in all the process of collection of spe specimen is required also stage of the disease should be kept in mind at the time of collection of the specimen and collection containers should be used appropriately that what container you have to use for what specimen should be chosen wisely and appropriately 
and also this rule hold true for transportation that use of correct transport media again sufficient material must be submitted for culture and other test so this is very much important because most of the time a laboratory is asked to perform many tests from a single drop of sample which is very difficult almost impossible to do it so so here is it is quite obvious that the specimen volume is very much important especially in certain cases like when do you uh, when you do a blood culture especially for mycobacteria and fungal culture of csf and urine it becomes more and more important so the volume of the specimen sent should also be adequate as far as possible use of best collection method should be followed it says that you should use the appropriate specimen whenever possible use tissue or fluid instead of a swab for submitting a culture except few occasions where swab can be acceptable like in case of thoid swab culture or a urethral culture swabs have lesser advantage as compared to the disadvantage let's see all those swabs have convenient have an advantage of being convenient and easy to use it have may, it has many disadvantages like it limits the volume so you cannot do perform multiple tests from a single swab most of the time a direct swab or the direct gram stain cannot be performed from a single swab because you have to do a culture first the swabs are easily getting contaminated there is a risk always and the recovery of the potential microorganism becomes difficult from a swab rather than a specimen like tissue or pus so as far as possible use appropriate specimen instead of sending a swab so the choice of the specimen to be collected for laboratory diagnosis is based on the site of the infection and the nature of the suspected microorganism so appropriate specimen for the clinical condition must be chosen accordingly so this is a list of appropriate specimen of certain clinical conditions at the same time what can be inappropriate like for lower respiratory tract infections sputum ball protected ball and mini ball are acceptable whereas for the same oropharyngeal secretion and sinus discharge are inappropriate specimen for culture and sensitivity for urinary tract infection midstream urine or urine from state catheterization or a suprapubic expirate is an appropriate sample while a sample collected from foley's catheter bag is an inappropriate specimen for superficial wound site infection aspiration of the pus or local irrigating fluid or swab of purulence originating beneath the dermis is appropriate whereas a superficial swab mixed with the adjacent microbiota or irrigating saline conservative containing preservative or all inappropriate specimen likewise from git if we consider about the stool the freshly passed stool washes and feces during endoscopy are appropriate specimen whereas a rectal swab is inappropriate or of low quality 
so the person collecting specimen should provide complete information on specimen requisition forms or in computerized order entry systems how to do that using a laboratory request form so what is a laboratory request form it is a communication link between laboratories and requesting physician and users of the laboratory services so this laboratory request form has many advantageous uses at the same time if it is not followed or used or inadequate information is provided in form of errors at the time of filling these request forms may lead to significant impact on the quality of laboratory results and ultimately the patient outcomes whereas if this laboratory request form is completely duly filled and used properly leads to the timely communication of the critical lab values to physician providing early intervention and improve patient care so what information should these laboratory request form provide these are the list like it should include patient name patient age and sex patient location the room number or the address physician name location of the physician specific anatomical culture site should be mentioned date and hour of specimen collection very important clinical diagnosis any provisional diagnosis or confirmed diagnosis should be mentioned a special culture request if any and the relevant history of the patient should be maintained here it is important to know that some of the organism for culture requires further incubation or prolonged incubation under this situation if a request form speaks about those conditions or request for a prolonged incubation it becomes quite helpful for the clinician for the to recover the organism from the clinical specimen then the laboratory request form should also state the special procedures used during the obtaining of specimen that becomes important at the time of processing of the specimen and last but not the least it should also report about the uses of antimicrobial whether the specimen is collected prior or it is collected after the antimicrobial as well as the antimicrobial which is in use it should be mentioned then the culture specimen should be processed ideally as soon as possible after collection and that should be the time lab should not be uh, more than 2 hours this is important because the microorganism we all know are living things they grow rapidly they reproduce and they die so any incomplete or misleading laboratory data may result if the organism is grown or reproduced or die before leaving reaching to the laboratory so it should be transported without a delay in a suitable transport media to the clinical laboratory so there is a role of transport media in certain situations these transport media are designed to prevent the excessive growth reproduction or even in case or even the death or the uh, of the 
micro organism which we are concerned in so here it is a list of some of the commercially available transport media the choice of the media also depends on the type of microbial microbes which we are expecting in a culture media in a culture specimen like stewards and emis media are the commercial available common media which are used for most aerobic and facultative anaerobic microorganism whereas emis media with charcoal is used for the transportation of nigeria gonori or when we are suspecting a case of gonorrhea then carry blair media is used as a transport media of pathogenic stool bacteria example salmonella shigella vibrio campylobacter or yersinia species whereas the buffered grisorol can be used as a transport media for potentially pathogenic stool microorganism there are certain other things to keep in mind while sending the sample or while transporting the sample that as far as possible you should avoid the use of cotton swabs because cotton swabs or even in case dry swabs are unacceptable so what are the solution for that the solutions can be either a plastic mess or a synthetic mess so what is a plastic mess a plastic mess is a polyurethane compound or made up of polyurethane which is there on a collection swab and it provides an effective and non toxic means for absorbing microorganism from clinical material so here it is prudent to emphasize that it has an adsorbing capacity the polyurethane has a chemical compound which is ha having a adsorbing capacity at the same time it is non toxic and these two things are differing from a other cotton swab where the cotton has a absorbing capacity at the same time it may be toxic for certain microorganism and other another alternative can be synthetic mess which are made recently available and which entraps microorganisms and prevents them for trans uh, and preserves them and can be used for transportation even without dipping the swab in a buffer media so they can be used for the recovery of aerobes however there are certain situations where a transport media may not be available or cannot be used so in those situation an alternative to the specific transport media can be even refrigeration so refrigeration will to an extent delay the decay or the loss of the microorganism that are usually present in the clinical specimen like in case if you are expected to send a urine sample and it is it may be delayed you are expecting a delay so it should be either refrigerated or in certain cases it should be inoculated in a primary media and the plate should be in transported to the laboratory but this process of refrigeration has of values only in certain specimen like urine stool respiratory exudates as well as wood specimen but it cannot be used for all or sometimes it may it is quite advisable not to refrigerate certain specimen like spinal fluid or any other body fluid genital or cervical swabs or discharges if we are suspecting a gonococcal isolation because the organism is fragile to temperature 
and also blood because blood pathogens are also fragile to temperature so in these cases if processing is delayed the specimen like spinal fluid or blood or the swab should be maintained or kept at 37 or 35 degree centigrade or even at room temperature rather than refrigerating it now once the specimen is arrived in the microbiology laboratory the time and the date of the receipt should be recorded the person receiving the specimen must also ascertain that all the pertinent information has been provided like the specimen has been collected in the proper transportation devices and that all other condition for an acceptable specimen has been met. Even after checking or taking precaution and doing a good collection there are certain times that the specimen cannot be performed in laboratory the testing of the specimen cannot be performed either it can either happen because the specimen may fall short of the quality of the volume or there may be short in volume or other eligible criteria in this case the laboratory may not accept the sample and may and need to reject the sample and should not carry out the processing hence a laboratory must have a policy of rejecting the specimen that do not meet these standard or requirements so what can be the rejection criteria of a laboratory the rejection criteria can either be because of improper specimen source like a urinary foley's catheter tip or a swab for a B culture if sent or a urine sputum or a routine genital or oral lesion submitted for an anaerobic culture or a urine specimen for from a euro bag from a catheterized patient or from other some other non sterile storage devices if collected or skin swabs from catheterized specimen site sorry and which again are not an acceptable specimen again specimen which are to be cultured for anaerobic anaerobic microorganism and are are doubted or dubious of uh, getting uh, of getting mixed with an aerobic flora that should also not be accepted or any specimen if sent in a formalin container so it should not be processed so these are the list of some improper specimen source which can be a cause of rejection then this rejection can be either because of improper specimen collection like uncapped or unsterile collection containers or swabs a dry swab a catheter trip which is arriving in a saline or transport media it should be sent in a sterile device a sterile container an improper transport media if used or environment for all microbiological specimen or a invisibly collected specimen in a leakage in a leaky container so these are all improper specimen collection or the rejection can be either because of improper transport like urine tra specimen for culture left at room temperature for more than 2 hours or refrigerated for more than 24 hours or frozen before sending to the laboratory or stool not in transport media received two hours after collection or stool specimen in transport media even even in transport media and delayed for more than three days at four degree centigrade or delayed for more than 24 hours at 25 degree centigrade so these all should be rejected because these are improper transport conditions then how to handle the specimen once it is accepted for that the microbiologist for processing and giving an interpretation on specimen results 
properly must have a basic insight of host microorganism relationship also he must know how to correlate the specimen received with results and diagnostic needs of the patient so for that there should be certain general consideration what are those these general consideration among these the first one is says that if you are getting a swab and you have to inoculate for more than on more than one agar always inoculate the least inhibitory media first so the swabs that will be inoculated on more than one agar plates can be rolled directly onto the agar surface inoculating the least inhibitory media first the other rule says that for clear fluid as a specimen other than urine if received should be cytocentrifuged first the specimen after cytocentrifugation the sediment which is present it should be mixed thoroughly or vortexed and it should be used for inoculating the plates if you are receiving tissue or bone for culture and sensitivity you should be it should be mined first and then it should be inoculated on the surface of agar rule 4 number 4 says that a gram stain should be examined for all the fluid tissue and some of the swabs so a direct gram stain has a important role then another general consideration says that based on the site of the sample and physician's request each specimen should be inoculated onto the appropriate media chosen to recover the suspected pathogens the last but not the least of the general consideration it says that it is best to retain specimen even if you find the container empty and without any specimen because sometimes even this empty container or a little bit of the specimen which may be re remaining may be helpful in recovery of the of the pathogen in case your primary culture fails to obtain any reports then although most of the cultures can be plated safely onto a standard laboratory bench many microbiologists prefer setting up culture in a bio safety cabinet this is how are mandatory for specimen that may contain mycobacterium tuberculosis so once the pathogens are propagated and you have obtained a growth on a culture media there is a further risk of developing laboratory acquired infection etiological agent of particular risk include mycobacterium tuberculosis brucella francisola terlensis and yersinia pestis so the cultures containing or even suspecting of one of these organism may be processed only or it should or rather it should be processed only in class 2 biological safety cabinet under bsl 3 conditions once the colonies have grown on agar culture plate the microbiologist must differentiate a potential pathogen requiring identification and antimicrobial testing from contaminants that represents member of the normal microbiota so here is the role of microbiologist that he should differentiate the pathogens from a micro normal microbiota so how to do that there are certain aids to the interpretation like he should look for the relative quantities of these isolates most of the time the 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 isolates which is relatively of higher quantity are the pathogen then at the same time there can be a aid like you can use the direct gram stain report to correlate the culture results
in general when examining culture of a specimen from the site adjacent to normal colonized mucosa potential pathogens should outnumber indigenous members of microbiota and should be seen in direct gram stain also when examining culture from specimen from presumably sterile sites potential pathogens may occur in any quantity or may or may not be seen even in direct gram stain so these two points must also be kept in mind and it is a useful policy to save culture plates with significant growth for at least one week allowing caregivers an opportunity to call to request further identification or additional antimicrobial test when clinically indicated so in summary obtaining accurate and cost effective microbial results test results is possible only when a specimen are collected transported and stored properly when proper procedures are followed cultures of a specimen are least likely to be contaminated and more likely to yield pathogens not only does this makes interpretation of the test results easier but it also reduces the unnecessary workup thank you for your attention